Lee Banaway, the LeBlanc Zinzao, and Akali. First pick was the Gwyn for OMG. On the other side, LNG taking a little bit of the OMG spices and get the Aphelios with that Olaf. Are they just stealing the draft? I feel like, like I, I, I really don't recommend doing that, by the way. I'd really not recommend doing that. Um, I always feel like Thresh is the better takeaway in, in, in the first uh, scenario here, because even if they take a Felios, then you can just take Varus and outlane them then instead. But yeah, what, what, what's going on? Wait, why? <laughs> oh my Wait, God. What, what the hell? <laughs> Wait, they're, just, they're just swapping compositions here. Now for LNG, even though this Silas has been locked in and you can get a counter matchup, either you do that here or you say, all right, let's get Kadea on the Thresh again. Let, 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 let's get him on a champion where we can actually facilitate the Aphelios. Um, I'm not sure I like the first picks coming out from LNG on towards this side, giving over <laughs> OMG everything that just worked out for you. Um, and it seems like oh, we're just going to be getting oh, that Jax hopping towards the top side for Ale. Hey, we saw Gauntlet's dropped in game number one from LNG. Well, they're looking to drop some more in game number two. Ale going to be piloting the Jax more than likely. It will also as well be the first time of this split, at least, on the stage. Very excited to see this extremely uh, attack-heavy top side of the map for LNG. Yeah, I mean, you can clearly see already that they should be playing up towards this top side of the map. When you have the Jax into the into the, um, the the Gwen, that is still a fine matchup for Gwen. We have seen Gwen still beat out Jax here. Now, the thought process is that Jax is going to be able to just jump in and beat you out with, obviously, the auto attacks. But your Counter-Strike, it doesn't block the Needlework. It doesn't block the 1,000 cuts and all the other damage that you yeah. really get out from the Gwen. But it do block the annoying early phase where she's able to get extra range on her, her E and just try and snip snip you um, away. But now, the last band to come out from OMG, I feel like you should take away one of the Thresh. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I'd be very, thresh, yep. very disappointed if the Thresh had gone through here because that would have just been everything LNG was looking for. But LNG now, they have the counter pick for mid lane. They already know it's going to be the Silas, so you can go for priority lane as well. And then you can just play for a lane put down towards the bottom where you want to play safe. And um, it looks like Icon is going to do that Ooh. with the Zoe here. A bit of an interesting composition really coming together from LNG. You have some speed split push with the jacks you have the kite bag with the failures you have to engage or well not engage but go win rather potential from the olaf and then you have the zoe a bit of everything uh, a bit of a mixed cocktail really coming out from lng here i was just about to say what is up with the red side of this first series just throwing everything at the wall see if it sticks why not you got some different compositions got some different things going for you but they lock in the brom to tie it all together on the other side we saw the classic Kaisa Nautilus lock in a ton of CC and a lot of team fight potential on the side of OMG this time around as well. Okay, so now we finally have at least something to play for in the early game as OMG. Aki now on the volley bear could look to influence some of the lanes, but the problem is he's going to have a bit hard of a time doing that towards the top side at least, just because the yeah. counter strike can just dodge out on the volley bear stun. Um, in the mid lane, you have the potential of trying to punish the Zoe, where that also is set up in green. And Zoe, for the most part, will will have priority in this lane uh, until Icon, or not Icon, until Cream gets the first item. So that's what you're looking to do. And then obviously, able towards the Kaiser. All of OMG's composition right now is it's just about diving. It's about piling onto the carries of LNG. And then from this side of LNG, you're looking to play topside. You're looking to get ahead of the curve because if you stay even and you get into a scenario where you have to fight around objectives between this OMG roster, right now, they have a better team fight composition. Yeah. So you need to be careful of that. And, you know, they had a they had a pretty decent team fight composition in game number one, but the lead got too unmanageable. And LNG were able to take it, see if LNG can do that again. I feel like the spotlight is right back to that jungle matchup. The early path thing going to be key. I want to see if we see if we uh, get any cheekiness out of LNG yet again this time around. The, that early vision played a decent role on the pathing path and things that we saw from Tarzan. And I really appreciated it. But this time on the opposite side, is a little bit more difficult, a little bit different as well. And that early game is still the key for this top side of the map. It, it, it really is. And and once again, it'll have to come down to the jungler, specifically when they, on, they are on these skirmish heavy junglers. I don't think this time around we'll be getting the same uh, dive as we saw in game one. If there's <laughs> really no lane that can facilitate the same kind of dive. So I'm expecting this one to be a bit more slow paced around the lanes and maybe going towards these skirmishes around the scuttles or around the crabs. 
As the lights turn on, they shine onto the stage of Summoner's Rift here. OMG taking on LNG for game number two of this best of three series. And there we go. Once again, you play against an Olaf, you always need to drop these early wards just because you need to be ready for that invade. And especially with a Braum. These are like some of the strongest skirmish champions from level one when you want to go for these invades. So a decent read for OMG coming out with this one, making sure that there will be no early game shenanigans to come out of LNG. But this time around, it also means that there'll be no solo start on the Olaf. So they have the track of where this guy is because there is a ward right now on his red buff. They know he's starting bot side on towards the side of omg there is a ward that's spotting yeah. that there is no leash right now on the red buff um and therefore they know aki is also starting top side so both teams right now have the intel of the enemy junglers and they know they're pathing opposite sides and i do i, I wonder how much this is going to lend out towards right last time around we saw both junglers start the leashless top side jungle this time around tarzan taking the bot side start maybe getting a little bit quicker i think that's something that was lacking last time around from aki is you didn't see that early skirmish come out from the olaf because the plays were already being made by tarzan maybe that changes in game number two yeah, that's the thing. Um, but but obviously for the Olaf, if you build up a dive towards the top side, the Gwen, she does have no flash. So there is still that setup coming in towards a dive. So as you can already see now, Ale is taking a slow approach to this lane. So it wouldn't surprise me if we started seeing some early dives towards the top side, at least for a little pressure gank. Yeah, especially for LMG. You just try to unlock that Jax a little bit. Bot lane, we're getting a 2v2 early on. Passive stacks up on Able. Stun comes down as well. LP able to get a ton of damage and still feeling very confident off that first game on the Draven. Meanwhile, top lane, we're getting a heavy, heavy trade on the new. He might be in some trouble here. He's looking for it, but he oh. gets it. New with the outplay of Ale. What was that damage? That looked like that was going to go on to Ale 100%. What? What just happened? I'll have to see a re replay of that because I wasn't too sure that E was on it. Now in the mid lane as well. Flash burned by Icon just to get away from that gank. Gets hit by the Sky Splitter on the way out as well. So not too heavy with that one. That's early proactivity from OMG. Looking like the blue side cure here right now for the squad as big engage on the Kodaya. Cold and able. It would get a bunch of damage off the support for LNG. Now they're looking for the dive. You said it wasn't going to happen, but here it's happening. They took the play from LNG and they turned it on its head. They've gotten one. Cold gets out by the skin of his teeth and they execute a dive just like LNG. But it's the way they've set this one up as well because they made sure Ale had no teleport because Ale got solo killed. He had to TP back to the mid lane. I Icon, or back to the top lane rather, sorry. Icon in the mid lane was forced to flash away from the mid lane. So even though he had the priority, he could not help in that bot dive. It's all these small things that's building up to OMG being able to pull off that dive. And, and what a great way to do it. What a great way to just flip this series on its head from what we saw in the first game. Game. With the same composition, it feels like as well. Uh, gotta love League of Legends. Gotta love the LPL here. It's all about execution. It's all about gameplay on the Rift, and that's what it's coming down to here. There's still a lot of options available for LNG, right? The Jax can still get really strong. The pick potential with Icon on the Zoe is huge, and your team fight ain't looking too shabby either. But you also have those kinds of strengths on the other side for OMG. Yeah, but remember now as OMG you're looking to accelerate what we already talked about with LNG is that they need to be a bit ahead of the curve here because their team composition it doesn't have one clear win condition. You have a lot of individual members. And this has been some of the things we have talked about with LNG in their downfall. Sometimes the draft isn't setting them up for success. This can be a bit harder to pilot. It's gonna allow, it's gonna require you to get these situations where you're able to be ahead in the mid game with your failures to kite back where you can facilitate him or get Ale ahead towards the side lane. But we've already seen how that went with him getting solo killed by New with the Gwen matchup. So it's not the best early game from LNG but they do still have some pick potential to pay, play with. They do still have the bubble. Tarzan does have a, a level advantage on towards the jungle, but it's about utilizing this while you still can because we've already talked about the team, com team fight composition of OMG. They do quite well. They do. Ale taking another trade on the new. We got a lot of focus towards the top side of the map right now. Tarzan is going to spot out Aki, taking his Raptors. Steps in just to get a couple more himself. 
Now we're looking at mid lane. If Icon steps up, he's going to be in a lot of trouble because Cold is here, Aki is here, and Cold has been on constant roam timers. Oh no, you're right back in the thick of things, and Icon dies to the bear as Aki gets the kill for OMG. And what did I tell you from the draft phase as well? There's not too much you can do towards Jax in, on the top side in terms of getting some ganks down. But punishing a Zoe with no flash and Cold utilizing Hex Flash to push in from Fog of War to make sure Icon is not just going to be running away is excellent play to come out from this bot lane. This is the OMG bot lane we like to see that every time they have the pressure, they play towards it. Now towards the top side, Cream has roamed up, so this is going to be a 2v2. LNG just trying to find a play on the map, but they might not have found the play that they wanted. They're going to have to commit to this fight as Ale is going to wait for a nice counter-strike. Tarzan very, very uh, in some trouble, at least, because he split from Ale. And LNG have just been kind of routed here by OMG. I don't know if they're going to be able to follow up the kill afterwards, but the play tries to come down. LNG try to force it even further, and it doesn't come out to anything. Yeah, a bit random. I don't think the Jax ultimate was the best to steal either, just because now Cream he had to dodge out on the Counter Strike. He had to be aware of st being stunned, and therefore he also lost the value of the Abduct, uh, abduct when he missed it. Um, so no kill were to come out here. But look at the fuck of all there. Once again, the Hex Flash is being challenged, and so once good. you finally see it, it's too late. There's nothing you can do. Flashless Zoe, the punish by Volibear, super good by OMG. This time around, you feel the team composition where you it's quite easy to identify your win conditions. And that is what's giving them the edge right now. And the CC chain on top of it as well <laughs> feels so bad. Bot lane LNG looking to make a play icon down here as well. It's a decent amount of damage on the Colt, actually. I was very surprised the Colt took that much after uh, the Aftershock proc, but no tanking is there on the Nautilus this early. And LP and Kadaya actually found a little bit of priority bot lane. Yeah, they finally are going to be able to at least try to get themselves some plating, but the problem for them is that that was the priority you had to play around with. Look at the mid wave. I could have to sacrifice some minions to, guy, to try and get that pressure down in the bot lane. You didn't get that kill. You didn't get it played. And now um, the pressure all of a sudden is on towards OMG. But right now they do have some tight downtime. Aki is clearing out the most important buff with the red buff, with blue buff having to go to cream and cream in just a bit. But as soon as those buffs have been handed over, then we can start seeing the resets then we can start seeing this herald play as we have hit eight minutes into the game we talked a lot about lng's setups around the rift Herald not being the best so definitely omg want to take advantage of that we'll see if they do put a lot of focus there as we see the pings coming in from omg it does look like they're gonna have that priority in mid lane to help out as well so it'd be an easy objective pickup if they want to go for it or they just go for a play on ale up here as Aki is already hovering, you do also have Tarzan, so could turn into a 2v2. But the roam from Cream with the priority in mid makes it easier. Ale actually taking a lot of damage from Nu. Nu not taking a lot either. Tarzan comes into the Rift Herald pit. He's got backup on the other side, but Kadaya is caught. Stormbringer comes in. They want the damage, and Kadaya is brought down by Aki. That's two kills for the Volley Bear early. 5 and 0 oh for OMG. I just can't believe what we're getting unfolded in front of us right now. And even if they got a pick with Kadaya, even if they got a kill on the side of LNG, an extended team fight was always going to be favoring OMG because Abel and Cold, they had the bot lane priority. They had the move to come up here before anyone else. So LNG, uh... I don't know what you're doing here. Like, you just forfeit this. You have no priority towards the top side. Your mid lane was not in your favor, and your bot lane had no move outside of Kadaya. So that was just an unfavorable fight we go through. And this is old OMG to me. Oh, oh not OMG, LNG. This is old LNG where I'm looking towards the objectives i'm looking towards the draft and it's just looking very tough for them to play it uh, looks like that at this moment at least 10 minutes in a decent gold lead developed by omg not too crazy having five kills to zero right it's only about a thousand gold so there is still a lot of hope there in the team fight potential and the scaling aspects of lng but it's a lot of the map pressure that i am worried about 
And that's the thing, because, I, I mean, as LNG on towards the later parts of the game, you do have some pressure with Ale on the side lane where he's able to build up some items for himself. And hopefully that uh, pressure will allow you to open the map up a bit more. It will allow you to get responses from OMG. So they're not going to be able to just set up objective after objective and bait you into these team fights. Because once again, that is what OMG wants. They want to be able to take you on a team fight front. And on the side of LNG, you need to play around with Fog of War. You need to be a bit more creative when, when this composition is what you've drafted for yourself, where you get the trouble bubble, where you can play off the pressure of Ale. He's going to be pivotal when you move into the later stages. And then if you can get yourself on an even footing or even ahead of the curve at some point, then you have the Ophelia. So that's going to be reliable backline damage at some point as well with the Braum to yeah. peel. We're still waiting on uh, Mythic item completions across the board. Uh, for everybody, pretty much, and actually for everybody. I would like to see where that influx of gold from the Rift Herald goes to, where OMG decides to kind of pull the trigger on that one. We have a dragon coming up in five seconds. It's going to be the second dragon of the game. OMG already up one. They've already positioned a lot of members down that way as well. And I, I just don't see how they can really fight for this one um, right now. The pressure can just be gained from Rift Herald. The pressure right now in terms of the bot lane wave is also in favor of the side of OMG. Although they do have a push in the mid lane and it's looking like they do want to push drop for a bit of a contest or at least try to establish some vision control for themselves. But once again, all in all, I, I still don't feel like this is this is a turf where you'll be able to punish or even fight with LNG. But they opt in for the Rift Herald with the mid lane here. Yeah, they want to take first tower of the game. Give that gold spread nicely across the members here, but it's just a little bit of distraction to go for that dragon as the pings already are coming down for OMG. As we said, this would be second objective picked up. The Rift Herald already dealt with, but Tarzan decided to go towards this, uh, this back. I mean, not the best um, useless Rift Rift Tail that we've ever seen here coming into this one, just because of the fact that you, you did have the priority around the Drake. Uh, you did have a push up down towards the bottom lane. So I feel like there were times where you could play um, a bit more with this one than you usually did. But Hooks comes in here with the depth chart. That's going to be able jumping in as well. LP, he's stuck on the turret. There's not much he can do about this situation. I'm just gonna check if I've got Marcel back with me, but I'm not too sure, actually. Um, so yeah, still moving on in the jungle. OMG trying to establish some control for themselves, but Aki, he has been back down and able to get out. And I think I have Marcel back with me. I believe I'm back. Not 100% positive of that one, but it uh, looks like I've been hit by the internet. Unfortunados yet again. I love your play-by-play -play casting, by the way. Maybe, uh, maybe you have a future in that one. But it's, uh, I, it's actually, a uh, I actually play by play in Danish when uh, when when I'm oh. casting in Danish. But you know, English so it's epic. a hard language. I, I'm I'm not too good. Uh, not I too believe good on that in one, you. Yeah. All right. Oh my God, that that's <laughs> what I missed. That hook from Cold. My goodness. I mean, they had the vision control to facilitate it, but you know, hex flashing over to get that hook together with the depth charge. That is just, you know, it's beautiful. And they're still playing around with all the pressure that they have. Um, this series is just looking like blue side domination from game one to game two. Um, just, you know, the teams, they swapped around. <laughs> I, it looks like they just took each other's positions at this point. I, I am beyond shocked that we're seeing this level of domination, right? The, the thing I want to realize here though, though, like you can talk about domination. It's six and O oh right now. It's six two zero rather for OMG. But the lead is nowhere at all near the same as what it was in LNG's dominant game one victory, right? They're just hovering over that two to one thousand or one to two thousand gold lead for OMG, and that gives LNG moments to strike. LNG looking for it under the tower here. The tower's already down, but Stormbringer comes down as well. And now you've got a lot of sustain, but can it get it? The paddle star isn't gonna connect the damage that you wanted, and Aki gets the kill with the flash forward onto Tarzan. And you know, it, 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 the priority was still there for Kree and he was able to move off as well. But now LP in the mid lane has been sent there. TP will come through to try and stop him. And I think he's going to be forced to back off on this one new on half HP. Obviously, he's looking a bit vulnerable, but this is a Gwen. She's level 11. That's two level up on the Aphelios. It is. It gets a little bit of advantage. I do also like the fact that you're able to get a lot of lane pressure from LP on this Aphelios. Felt like, I mean, you know, even at 0-2, you're able to get a decent amount of damage. Also has 
the chakrams now, so a lot of damage and range. And I want to see now next what we look to, right? We're 15 minutes in. You've had a lot of pressure early on by OMG. I know you said earlier you want to see them put the pedal to the metal, keep that pressure up, continue to try to get these snowballs. And they have to an extent, right? You've got three kills on Aki. You've got two kills on Abel, which is huge for their composition when you're looking at the team fights. And they've been able to get a ton of objective control. But you got to keep it up, right? Like, like I was highlighting to you earlier, the lead is not that far out of hand right now for LNG. Yeah, that, that you're completely right about that one. But I think for LNG, they're quite lucky. They rolled a cloud soul. So right now, what they can say <laughs> is that they can just tell Ale, all right, Ale, freeze on the side lane. Just chill. Just keep the one v one match up against New, uh, and do well. Just just stay even. Well, will freeze us. They'll have to have a win condition in the Baron. The, the Cloud Drake is not going to be a win condition for this team. It's not going to be a Drake and all of a sudden they start winning. Um, so right now for LNG, you, you can afford yourself oh, to take Ale. a breather. He's taking the 1v1, but he's got backup right behind him. Ale, he can't get the Kingslayer. And now the depth charts to follow is cold. They're going to find him. Cream gets the kill. Ah, uh, sucks. I, I, I guess it, it, it was close, but the Kingslayer coming through, coming through, and I don't think there was any healing reduction in his inventory. No, there was not. So, once again, OMG just accelerating their lead here. Now, with one minute on towards the Drake, that should be soul point for OMG. I still can't see how LNG is going to be able to contest it. They also have the second Rift Herald. They can use that in mid lane to just open up the turret. Remember, it's already quite low from the first usage of the Rift Herald. So, once again, I, I just don't see any way LNG coming back in a teamfight scenario. You have to build something up on a side lane. It can't come from the fight. It's getting, those fights are getting scarier and scarier as the minutes go down. But very interesting to see Ale get caught in the side lane like that. It's definitely not the position you want if you're trying to make a comeback in this game. And that Jack specifically where we said that is a huge win condition right now for LNG. Priority is back in mid lane though. Both teams showing a lot of presence as the dragon has spawned. This is soul point for OMG. If they're able to pick it up, would be the first dragon of the game for LNG if they're able to find a way to position in front of it. But we've said that's one of their biggest downfalls is this objective setup not being set up on stable ground. I mean, just give it up. There, there is really no reason to yep. fight for this one. Um, it's only the third Drake. It's not even soul, even if it was Cloud Soul. It's still cloud so, so I mean, just you know, try and get something I, I'm else. I'm gonna on the start map taking here. a little bit of offense to this. You're you're harming my my friend, the cloud soul. All right, I'm just well, saying. I don't care about Felix. <laughs> all right. Oh no, apparently uh, Icon needs to needs to care a little bit more. He almost got dragged out after that little engage there. But Rift Herald was spawn in bot lane. Doesn't really get anything here. Ale was looking to at least stop it, but Cream is right here. Goes for the abduct as well. Has the ever frost. Does buy a lot of time. The Rift Herald not going to find it, though, as the Dragon falls to OMG. Third Dragon of the game. Well, this is the biggest problem right now, because your with sight lane, quote-unquote, win condition is not even a win condition. He can't. He can't what we want. Like, in a... Oh okay, God. I'm just going to shove it up. He's almost getting dived, but he's out of there. In a scenario, he should be able to just get all the pressure he needs where two people will have to deal with him. Now one is enough, and he's even the one on the back foot. Tower in mid getting focused. Stormbringer actually used by Aki to get out. Ale still taking a 1v1 on Cream, but he's got Kingslayer. He's got a ton of regeneration in the kit of the Silas. Ale maybe looking for the punishment. You do have Icon coming up the lane, but the rest of OMG are also coming to support Cream as they want this second tier tower. Battlestar goes wide. That move from Cold was insane. Over the wall, the predict and they kill Icon. Afterwards, LNG are running away. My goodness, LP gets half his health taken away in one strike. And now you found even more. It's 11 to one. And it's looking like we're going to game three here soon because OMG have shown up on the night. They really have, and they just have to lane for, lanes actually to play for on the side of LNG. It looks like it was just five players who queued up in solo queue and said, you know what, I felt like playing Zoe today. I feel like playing Jax today. And, and while some of them move. can oh work God. in a vacuum by themselves, they need more to actually facilitate them and actually set yourself here. A really nice engage to come through from Cold here. He's finally able to show how good of a support he is when he's not forced to play on the tower 24-7. And then it started to look good, quote-unquote good, from the side of LP because he was on Aphelios. <laughs> he was able to kite back. 
there's just no one to save you. The Braum, the Peel wasn't enough, and it was just super easy for OMG to clean up the fight with that composition. It truly was, and my goodness, like, Colt, and that's something I want to go into a little bit more, is like, we wanted to see how these supports get active with the junglers and things along those lines. Colt has been constantly active, able, able to stay a little bit safe, pardon the pun, in the bot lane, has unlocked OMG's composition. You see it shining here in game number two. It just makes me wonder what the heck is gonna happen in game number three, but we're not there just yet. 21 minutes in here. LNG still trying to find ways to fight back. Ale wants to take these 1v1s, wants to try to assert dominance over the side lane, but it's a hard task. Ooh, Death Charge actually used on LP. Now they're getting the TPs in double from OMG. Does LNG immediately back off after that call? Yeah, that does force out a TP, so Ale, he should be able to finally get a turret for themselves, but I see nothing stopping them taking this one. The pressure on towards Icon now, if you can get some good hope down, you may be able to take the fight, but once again, very unlikely. LNG so fed, although one bottle connects. TP coming in from Ale, it's a little bit late. AoE damage team fight initiated from OMG. Their health bar is getting a little bit low. LNG, this is your fight. This is your moment. Is it though? As you've already lost Tarzan, you thought for a moment that it was gonna go your way, but those leads are too damn big. And OMG might lose a couple members here, but they're gonna clean house. LP, the next member, he's able to get one though. And beautifully done, Ale, the last member of LNG to stay standing. Yeah, and I, there should just be nothing stopping you going for this one. The Gwen still does a lot of damage with the true damage to come through from the snip snip on this Baron, but it looks like Ale, he is stepping up to posture for this one. He is trying to step up to try and see if he can do anything about the situation. All right, we'll see if he's got a decent amount of damage here. Counter-Strike comes out. That's all he got. He got one, but he's going to go down right afterwards to Aki, and the Baron will also fall to OMG. You know what? We take those. That that That's at least a shot down. And honestly, I feel like this was the best start you were ever going to get from RNG. But with New and his little Halo of Mist, there's just nothing stopping him from moving out. You don't get the Brawl Passes down on enough people. Cream is able to uh, to, to Sonny's, glass, uh, Sonny's Hourglass it out. He didn't get it on towards the Gwen either. And then it's just on towards LP and Ale. And luckily, he does hit a strike with the Calibron to make sure you get the snipe to take him down. But after that, it's just so scattered. You're not able to play out yeah. these fights. Really rough time of it there as we are getting very close to Soul for OMG. They've already got the positioning. This is just going to go down. This is their objective. This is their side of the map at the moment. And for LNG, it's just trying to find a way back if you can, right? You're almost at that 7,000, 6,000 differential. And it's it's really right. I said in game number one, how does OMG respond to this? They have to be reeling right now after the absolute domination LNG showed in game number one. But they throw it right back in their face here in game number two. And I love it. These are the kinds of moments that I live for because you get to show up against one of the top teams in the LPL here and take it to them in a way that is so dominant that makes you second guess everything. And now we see Ale in the side lane yet again looking for that Lane dominance over Cream, but Cream's got backup and he's calling the boys, Zaki and Abel, right behind here. They're going to go for the 1v1 before it all comes down to it, but Ale, can he get it? The sustain is there from Cream. The counter strike, it doesn't hit. Ale, going to be. No, he's not. He dies to Abel, and that is huge. Tower does fall to LP in the mid lane, though. Yeah, there we finally see a bit of what LNG's composition want to do. They want to scatter multiple members up towards the top side of the map, but Ale, he's just not in a position where he can actually take these fights. And then you can say, don't worry, guys, we've got the mid lane turret. But I mean, in, in all honesty, it's not going to matter too right, much, right? You're still looking at an OMG with Baron buff starting to shove off these lane, who's getting the mid lane priority, who's getting the top lane priority, and is looking to finalize these moments of this game. They have the Cloud Soul, and they're just needing to take care of the rest of LNG's base. Speaking of taking care of the base, they're getting the tier two tower in the top lane right now. Still got Baron available for them for another about 35 seconds. Maybe looking for the inhib tower here to make some permanent lasting damage on the base of LNG. Mid lane still focused, but now we see the cut away and all five members of OMG coming into the top side. Glacier Fisher came out from Cream there with the ultimate steal. 
of Kadaya, but they're gonna back off for the moment as the pressure is a little bit too high. The the team fight potential is still there for LNG if they can pull the right one. I mean, it, 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 it sure is. It, it's not the strongest, but it looks like oh Ali's gonna try and find it. Ali's feeling confident right now. Maybe a little too confident. He's got the rest of the team right behind him. OMG just capitalized on the overextension there and punish Ale. Big surprise with the Jax jumping. 1v5 goes down there. Now the rest of the sieging can continue. Baron has run out, but that is not going to stop the members of OMG from just pushing in these lanes. And they should be able to take care of these inhibitors. That's going to be two in him. So two lanes of super minions coming down. Look for the third because it is wide, wide open. The last two structures that will remain are the Nexus Towers. A little bit of split focus here, but it's still the wallets that are too darn big and they're able to clean some more health bars. Stormbringer buys some time here, but OMG might be taking a fight like LNG did in their game, and they might get it turned away as that's Cold dying. And does the follow-up come through from LNG? Big paddle star barely misses Abel. Oh, TP's coming oh. through as well from Ale. They want to continue on this one. They're going to keep the chase up here. Oh, I don't know if they can do it. I think they should be able to get out. Tarzan flirting with death right there. If he just steps a little bit too far forward, they're going to turn. They end up calling off the play. The rest of OMG make it out. Cold sacrificing his life. Luckily for OMG, there are rules and timers to when you can int in League of Legends. <laughs> you can int when Baron is not, up, not up. You can int when Elder Drake is not up. As soon as those buffs start spawning, then you can't let, let your life go down because then they will have a man advantage for these objectives. But just going for this pressure here, um, it, it's fine. Obviously, it's not an ideal scenario losing members here, but it's not going to be something that loses you the game. You still have the priority for when these buffs start respawning on the map again. Ale in the side lane yet again. The, oh, the Everfrost, so, so close. See if Cream able to find him, Counter-Strike, not gonna hit. Nice flash from Ale, he's gonna get him out. You got the members still running, and Cream is pretty darn quick, but he's gonna make it out with another hop. And OMG, renewed pressure on bot lane with all members accounted for. Yeah, you have three inhibitors right now. The pressure should be immense for LNG, and in 50 seconds, Baron yeah, will be up as well, anything. so. Yeah, that's the thing. That's OMG right now. You're just going to keep these lanes shoved in. You're going to chip away as much damage as you can and keep threat, threatening the potential of a fight. If that doesn't work, you can always go back to Baron. Here's the last engage. This is the last hope for LNG. Their backs are against the wall, and OMG do not care. They're going to punch through that wall. They're going to take us to a game number three. The cleanup from New. The cleanup from OMG. They're looking dapper as we're going the length, the distance of this three-game series. And there we finally go. OMG, they find themselves a composition where you can play for the early game where they're able to set up the dives. But I have to get something off my chest. Can we talk about how in both series now, the red side drafts have sucked, all right? <laughs> they're really hard to play. And I've no idea why they do this to themselves as it looks like I've lost myself again. He looks so happy though. That, that, oh, what a what a what a wholesome little still photo. That could have been way worse. Oh, there we go. Back again. Uh, that, How are yeah. you? Get a little freeze frame there. The action was too crazy. We we got we got a little off off the handle there with that one. But I man, what what a performance from that game. I have to say, just to be able to see the the turnaround for me is what what is absolutely crazy. As we get to look at the uh, the gold graph a little bit and see what happened there. Very, uh, feel like very similar things happen in game one, game two, just different logos, right? It, it, it really does. Like, you can put those graphs up against each other. You can put the comps against each other. And it just feels like, oh, you're telling me the team that had agency in the early game to actually play and had team fight potential was winning? Wow, that's crazy. I cannot believe it. So now I'm moving on to the red side here. Like, why did you suddenly just change anything? LNG, they had a winning recipe. And then they gave the winning recipe to OMG. They were like, oh, you made this comp? I made this comp. And then they just <laughs> took it for themselves. But LNG, they had the two red, red side first picks. They could have gone for the Volley Bear. They could have gone for the Thresh. And then you could have gone for the Aphelios. Instead of getting into a situation where it's like, oh, um, yeah, Thresh was banned. Guess we'll have to play Brom now and uh, we can't really do much. Sucks, guys. I, I gotta know, and I'm hoping maybe we get a post-game interview or maybe something on Twitter later on. I gotta know 
what the Cobbs were like going into that draft for LNG game number two. Was it confidence? Was it just, I want to take what they had in game number one and, and, and show them how it's done? They got to expect <laughs> some craziness here in the LPL. We've got it for our first series of this incredible night of League of Legends. We're going to step away, take a little break as we get ready for game number three between LNG and OMG. You're not going to want to miss it.